So I am starting a new series on Python that from very basics to ins from installing to learning from the very core and all of the things which are there. Alright, so this will cover the concepts of AI and robotics of class 9, 10 ICSE as well as the CBSC course. Alright, so, so the very first thing is that you need to first of all go to your edge or browser whatever your favorite browser it is and go to Google and search for Python and you will see that the first link welcome to python.org you will click on this link and from over there go to downloads so once you click on the download you will just you will be presented with the screen that download the latest version of Windows download Python 3.11.4 for this time of recording this is the latest version which we have so I'll just click on download and click on save and if your internet is fast enough then most likely it is so we'll download and click on this open file just wait for a while okay and then click on add to part don't forget to add click on this add python.exe to path and then click on install now and then press yes and wait I'll pause the video over here and I'll resume once it is installed so as you can see the software is now installed now press and close okay so um, there are many ways to practice this um, Python one of the common ways that you will go to start and over there you will see that once you have installed you will see that there are some options are there so I, I have two very two options of Python Python 3.10 and 3.11 so I'll click on the latest version Python 3.11 and if once you click on this subfolder option there will be certain um, icons presented with it so I'll click on idle so this is a common way of practicing Python normally on Windows if you have do not install any kind of um, IDs before so this is the this is what it is so so now with the screen which you are seeing this is called the Python interpreter or Python REPL REPL -E REPL means read evaluate print loop alright so whatever command we just press, press over here it will immediately show the result so if I write like the tradition of whenever we learn programming the tradition is that we have to first of all uh, use the uh, term hello world so there are multiple ways so I'll show you the first way to execute the command I'll write print within that double quotes I'll just mention hello world then uh, then uh, exclamation mark and then close the call uh, you know quotes and then close the parenthesis and press enter so you'll be presented with this line hello world so this one this is one of the step another step is that you can go to file click on new file and here you will type the command or the program so I'll write print parenthesis double quotes hello world now you have to keep in mind that that was the interpreter mode okay so or the shell mode where we just type the command and it shows the answer is there and there and this is what a script mode it is called where you will write down the program and you will just have to first of all go to file click on save and you will be uh, taken within, uh, within a dialog box where you have to click on the folder uh, in which you are going to store so I'll just click on my um, documents folder I'll just save it as that PRG1 program 1 and then click on save now this program is saved but as you can see in the title bar you can see that it's written PRG1.py so it is the file name right so along with the path d colon slash document slash PRG1.py so this is a file name and the extension is always dot py py indicates is a python file now click on go to the run and click on run module as you can see there is a shortcut F5 you can press on the shortcut key or you can just click on this run module so if you click on the run module this program gets executed but I personally think that the best way to do python programming 
is to do with Jupyter Notebooks. Why I particularly uh, prefer this one? Because, you know, like a copy, all the scripts on the previous scripts will be, s will be saved within a single file. And you, you don't need to f uh, go over and look for the, all the scripts which are stored in, in your computer. Now, how to do it? Now, uh, first and foremost, you have to click on Start and, cli and just search for CMD, Command Prompt. Press Open and then just make a folder. Now, I have two hard disks in my computer, so I'll just use my second hard disk, which is D. So D colon. I'll just I'm just navigating to my second hard disk. In case you have a computer with two partitions, then you will use D colon as well. So over here, I'll just make a folder. So you just you just don't need to do anything else. And if you just change the directory, just type Jupyter Notebook. But uh, right now, uh, since I have just installed new version of Python, so the old version is probably not installed over here, or it just needs a new version. So what we have to do, do is that I'll use a command called pip. Now, one uh, during the time of installation, pip was already selected. If you just follow, so pip Python uh, Python package manager. With the help of that, we will install the software Jupyter Notebook. So pip pip Jupyter spelling exactly like that J U P Y T or Jupiter then notebook then press enter now wait for now if it shows that it can't find Jupiter then probably we have ty typed the wrong command so the, p the correct command is pip install Jupiter Jupiter notebook and just wait is downloading fetching all the data from the internet and it is processing for you just just be patient enough because it won't be taking so much time just wait looks like it's almost done I'll pause the video over here until unless it finishes up. So as you can see, now the command is finished. Just close the window. Now you don't need to just uh, type the command every time. This software is installed with the, with the help of Python pip. So whenever you'll just go to start and just type on CMD, and anywhere. Suppose uh, I'll just do with my uh, in my directory. So D colon. So in my D drive. So I'll just type normally Jupyter notebook it should fire up my browser automatically a server will start in the background you just don't uh, just don't forget to close just don't make sure make sure that this uh, this window is open okay don't close it up all right so just so as you can see the browser uh, is fired up and here you will see that jupyter notebook will come so these are jupyter notebook all right so there are so many folders are there so you can you can make a new folder or you can just write down the program directly so I'll, what I will do is that go to new folder new and click on notebook nothing else nothing more just make it simple all right so Jupyter notebook so it's saying that select, select a kernel so just click on select and this kernel is now attached now this one attached. Okay, all right. Now whatever program we will do, it just we'll do it over here. So just I'll just maintain notebooks. I'll and I will definitely share this notebook in the um, video uh, link. Okay, in the description part, you'll just f find my uh, this notebook. All right. So I'll just rename is that that learning Python. Click on rename, and it is done. Now it is renamed. Now we'll just try and run the command in, uh, over here, okay? So right now there are many things to learn about Python. The first thing is that Python does not have any kind of curly braces. So since it doesn't have had have any kind of curly braces, it does not have. So it uses indentation. Now what do you mean by indentation? 
Indentation is basically a set of you know equal spaces are added, equal spaces and tabs are added so that it it can be referred that the such block of code is under such block block of uh, code. Suppose E for while those who have already kind of experience in programming will understand what I'm talking about. So, for example, if I write something like this, that if five greater than two print five is greater. So as you can see, that there is no such such kind of curly braces. Now, if you click on run. This will show show me the out answer. All right. Just the, you don't have to understand what is going on, but you need to understand that there are some spaces and rules which we need to understand. So I'll just go from the very basics to and to the very end. So, so the first thing is that I'll teach you that the what is comments. Now, as we are learning programming, so comments are very important part of program. Why? First and foremost reason is that programs uh, comments helps you to understand that what you are doing in the program this basically it makes the program more readable okay so there are three types of there are basically two types of comments are there so if you use hash this is a single line comment all right now these comments are not generally compiled by any kind of compiler these are just lines to make sure that the program is readable and and can be un understood by other programmers. All right, this is a single line. Another one is what this is, this is called multi-line comment. Okay, now if you use three single quotes and followed by three single quotes closing, and whatever if you write, this is this becomes your multi-line comment. Okay, so so this is a multi-line comment. All right. Now I need to add new uh, new line. This called each cell. So what what I can do is that I will go just click on this one plus to insert new uh, cell below. All right. Now I hope you have understood the concept of comment. Now I'll just teach you that how powerful the normal print statement it is. So if you just write print hello we are learning python just press enter this will run alt enter is a shortcut key to execute the particular line now if i write print good double quotes with the double quotes comma afternoon so as you can see that I've written good followed by afternoon. So there is no space in between except the c the comma. This comma we can say it has a semi uh, a separator. Now by default the separator is space. Now if I run this one, you'll see that a space is in inserted. Now with the help of comment, I'll just try to explain the syntax. The syntax is syntax for print statement or print function is so print objects then your sep and st your end now sep is um, is always by default white space now what do you define by a white space if you um, just give a single quotes and this just press enter or sorry um, just space press on space key on your keyboard and followed by the single quotes you will see that this is this is what white space it is this is what white space so this is what i'm referring and end is always by default is slash n slash n means new line new line it's an it is an escape sequence now you'll ask me sir 
or anyone that what is escape sequence now escape sequence are you know a non graphic or you know some uh, characters are there which generally doesn't shows them in the output but it does the works for example slash and it just works like an enter key all right so, so if i write print good afternoon and i don't want this there's a space there's there should be any space in between so what should i do i'll write step equal to single code start single quotes to end single code start single quotes end and if i run it you see that there is no space in between right so if i write print good then afternoon followed by sep equal to suppose uh, at the rate okay now if i press alt enter this is that the all at the rate symbol will just sit in between not after the afternoon why because it doesn't considers the any semicolon after the or you can say just before the sep command is not considered as a separator all right so if i write two lines suppose print it's saturday all right and then print let's have dinner outside now when if you run these two lines you will see that these two lines are getting printed one after another which is very obvious right but uh, just think about it why it is happening it's happening because we have a end statement now if you just modify this end statement over here end equal to suppose exclamation mark now what is going to happen that it's saturday now since we have modified the end st statement so the next line is not going to be printed in the next line as next line okay as as usual it's going to be printed in the same line where it's saturday end jo wherever is saturday line ends there will be exclamation mark and followed by let's have dinner outside so the answer will be it's sa it's saturday exclamation mark let's have dinner out dinner outside so it should be let's have dinner outside all right this is what it is now um small children in schools are now ge are getting python so um there's there one example of a question that is being given in many schools so for example so um the question is that at the rate dash at the rate dash at the rate followed by a question mark so let's try to finish up so you can see there are three at the rates are there so we'll write print at the rate comma at the rate comma at the rate all right and there are dashes in between so we'll write sep equal to single quotes or double quotes doesn't matter as long it is it works so using single quotes or double quotes it just fine so put dash and if you write like this you'll see that the answer is dash dash which is in between but now if you add end equal to question mark you will see that the answer is just like the question as it is given right so i hope is understood that how this print statement works it is very powerful tool okay so it is very powerful as and you should you should be using more right all right so next concept is that we will be learning it is a variable now what is a variable so variable are locations to store values okay variables are locations to store values now if you have done any kind of programming with any kind of programming language like c c++ java you will be shocked to know that python does not uh, whenever we uh, we need to declare a variable we not need to we do not need to declare data type okay why because python is a dynamic type programming language where the data which is which is being stored inside a variable the programming language automatically understands that okay 
what kind of data it is so it recognizes what is the what is the data we are storing inside a variable whereas static type programming language we have to actually mention that what is the data we are going to store so it's a good thing in and bad thing in both ways okay so it depends now um now what how to declare a variable the syntax is that any alphabet but keep in mind that whenever you are to declare a variable a variable must not start with any kind of you know question mark at the rate or any kind of numbers so this is the si this is a convention we have to follow and this is the rules if you try to declare suppose if i try to declare 1 a equal to 5 so definitely it's not a, a valid statement but if you have if you write a then followed by 1 then it is a valid statement all right you can't write like this for equal to 5 because for is a keyword you can't for is a keyword but if you change that for to capital letter f then it doesn't works like that why because um capital letter for is your is not is just a normal uh, you know identifier okay now you'll actually say what is identifier identifier are any names given to a variable um uh, function method function or method or classes there will be more like generators decorators there will be more so those things will cover later so for this particular time being we are thinking about the variable so a1 equal to have what does it mean that a1 is a container or a jar inside that i am storing 5 got it now um <coughs> we can store like 5 5 is what 5 is just a number but what kind of number it is it's a integer it is an integer so what is an integer integer is basically any number without any kind of decimal or point place now how to determine that it is whether it is integer or not we will determine with the help of a function called type so we'll print and type we'll just let the name is type and inside there we'll just pass the variable if you run it you'll see that it's showing as a class int so class int indicates that it is a type of data type integer all right now if i write something like this like a2 equal to 5.5 now if i try to check that what kind of data type it is so we will write print type within that a2 and i press enter you'll see that it is float float so float or float type value means that any kind of point value it is float now if i write another value suppose five b equal to 5 plus 2j so this is a complex number okay so 5 is the real number part and 2j is the imaginary number part so how to check so print type b press enter it shows complex all right now um next one i'll just just cover the basics okay this chap this part is huge 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 topic so will take me around um many videos to finish up this one in depth all right so if i write suppose c equal to if a single quotes hello so whenever we are declaring any kind of someone's names any alphabet any you know um any address of someone so those are all basically strings okay so whenever we are declaring so string can be either be written as c equal to hello like that or we can also write c equal to double quotes hello both is correct okay either by single quotes or double quotes but they have their own use cases which i'll show in just a minute now if i print the type you will see that it will show the show you answer of str so str is what str stands for string all right so now this what it is so so basically this is the basic concepts which i am which, which i'll be doing up to here today so i'll continue with this with this uh, this python process and i'll continue to teach this one so that everyone ha will have the equal access of learning python in depth all right thank you everyone for this particular video see you in the next one